Hey guys, how's it going? Another Facebook Live video. Today we're going to be talking about what your doctor doesn't want you to know about cholesterol. Okay, so I could probably spend, you know, 30 minutes talking about cholesterol, but I'm going to try to break it down into some key uh, factors today and some key components on and educating you on cholesterol and understanding how to talk to your doctor about cholesterol. If this video ends up being popular and people have more and more questions, I'll create more and more videos about cholesterol because it's probably one of the most misunderstood diagnoses uh, in medical practice today. Most people that are being diagnosed a statin actually don't need one. And doctors, you know, to their, um, I guess, benefit in a way, get a lot of pressure from pharmaceutical companies to recommend statins. In fact, they some doctors even get incentives for uh, giving people statins. They get kind of like a percentage of the, sat the, the statin price or whatever you want to call it. Sounds kind of conspiratory, but it, it is known that some doctors do kind of uh, have that uh, benefit of diagnosing people with high cholesterol and then getting kind of some kind of uh, uh, affiliate, you know, income from uh, from the pharmaceutical companies for giving people statins. So that's all I'll say about that. Um, but I w really what I want to do is try to educate you a little bit more about cholesterol, so that we understand what's going on and how you can best arm yourself so when you go to your doctor and you get your cholesterol numbers, how you can question some of the things that they do and ask for more detailed information so that you can make the decision whether or not you want to go on a statin. Um, because it is your decision to go on a statin. A lot of us trust our doctors to give us the right information. Unfortunately, a lot of doctors do not stay up to date with current research and so they use the same research that was done 40, 50 years ago, which unfortunately for you is I, that, to me, that's malpractice, but I'm not a doctor, uh, so I won't go there. Um, but I want to best arm you because it is in your control. So let's go ahead and get started. So the very first bullet point that I want to go over is 90% of all cardiovascular disease is preventable through diet and lifestyle factors. Okay, So that means that all of the diseases or all the things that attribute to cardiovascular disease and cholesterol is uh, basically one of the top concerns that we have when it comes to cardiovascular disease. We'll talk about why cholesterol isn't the best marker for cardiovascular disease later, but just so you know that 90% of all the cardiovascular disease symptoms are preventable or modifiable with diet and exercise and other lifestyles. So it's not a genetic uh, predisposition, you know, nine times out of 10. 10% of people in the population will have some kind of genetic predispositions towards having high cholesterol. And you know that's fine, you can test for that and see if that's you, but 90% of people can modify their diet, modify their lifestyles, whether it's exercise, nutrition, stress, sleep, or all of them, uh, you can modify them and you can reduce your risk significantly by things that are in your control. So that's a very big positive. The next thing I wanna talk about is the amount of cholesterol that you eat, that it's found in like eggs and meat and fish, and other types of foods, specifically animal foods most likely, um, are not really absorbed by the body. Okay, Your body has a hard time absorbing that type of cholesterol. So that being said, where does most of the cholesterol in your body come from? It is actually made in your body. 75% of the cholesterol that you find in a test or in your body is made by the liver. Okay, So that means that only 25% is actually absorbed through food and when your body senses that you're getting cholesterol through your diet, it reduces the amount that it makes so that you're not overproducing uh, cholesterol in the body. So your body's very smart about knowing how to modulate the levels. If you're consuming more cholesterol, it lowers how much it makes. If you're not consuming enough cholesterol, it raises it. So taking a statin really won't do much for you at all because uh, if you're not gonna eat it, your body will just make it. And so in a lot of ways, statins long-term don't work and we'll talk about uh, some more reasons why in, in the future. Um, the next bullet point that I want to talk about is total LDL or total and LDL cholesterol are not accurate markers for understanding whether you have um, any type of risk towards uh, cardiovascular disease or heart disease of, disease of any kind. So in the past, we've been told that total cholesterol, so that big number that we all get when we get our blood tested, we go to the doctor, and LDL cholesterol, which in the last five years we've been told is the bad cholesterol, really aren't accurate markers. And we'll talk about some accurate markers in the future um, of this video towards the end. But when you go to your doctor and he gives you, or she gives you a total cholesterol score and says your cholesterol is high, you need to go on a statin, the first thing you need to do is, well, 
is that my total like overall cholesterol? If it is, that's not an accurate reading. So you can just you know throw that out the window. If it's just your LDL cholesterol, again, you might want to look at that, but it's not an accurate uh, marker or an accurate test for determining whether or not you are going to have heart disease or whether you currently have heart disease or you're going to have heart disease in the future. So just keep that in mind. Those tests alone are not accurate enough to give you a diagnosis or to, to, for your doctor to give you a diagnosis that you need to go on a statin. Okay, and just kind of as a overall per uh, kind of thought or fact, most people don't need to be on statins. There are very, very, very few people that need to be on statins, and that's usually a an anomaly of some kind, right? You have a rare condition where your cholesterol is excessively elevated, and it's all the markers we'll talk about later, and you're at risk for heart disease, and you're one out of you know 100 million people, so to speak. So most of the people that are on statins do not need to be on statins. Some of them are on it because they're not willing to make diet and lifestyle changes. Some of them don't know, and their doctors are just taking advantage of them, which is very unfortunate, but at least after this video, you have more ammo, so to speak, to go to your doctor and say, this is what I want done because I wanna make sure that I actually need to go on a statin. And, and by the way, going on a statin isn't just like, oh, okay, I'm taking a statin. There are a lot of negative side effects. Um, one of the things that statins affect is your brain. Okay, so long-term studies uh, on statins have shown that it actually can be a contributing factor to things like dementia. So, and, and one of the reasons why is because your brain lives off of cholesterol. I mean, not 100%, but it has a huge part of um, your brain function is your healthy cholesterol levels. So if you're consistently lowering it to a point where it's un, um, naturally being low and it's being forced to be low, that is potentially going to be dangerous for causing dementia later on in life. Um, and, and that's really unfortunate, but that's, that's one of the things we're starting to see with statins. So the statins do have some long-term negative, very serious negative side effects. So it's not just, oh, I'll take a statin, it's no big deal. It's like, no, you could end up with dementia in your later years and completely forget the last you know, 10 to 15 years of your life, which I don't think is any, something that anyone wants, okay? So the next point I wanna talk about is the big saturated fat myth, okay? So you know, 50, 60, 70 years, like in the early 60s up into the 70s, there was some research that was showing that, or potentially showing that saturated fat contributed to heart disease. And with new science and better ways of testing this and, and more and more research being done on saturate, saturated fats uh, effect on heart disease, we're starting to show that saturated fat has little to no effect on uh, cardiovascular disease or heart disease, okay? So when, when you hear people say that saturated fat or red meat is bad or um, cheese is going to give you heart disease or any of these factors, you have to basically challenge that and say, well, you know, let's actually look at the research. Because if the, if the research, the current research that's been done with better science is showing that saturated fat does not negatively affect um, you know, your health in the sense that it isn't going to cause heart disease directly. Now, saturated fat, because it is fat, might get you to overeat calories. And if you do that you know, over a long period of time, that could contribute to heart disease, but it's not the factor in, in heart disease. It's overeating and being metabolically unhealthy. So, just understand that saturated fat is not going to give you heart disease, it's not gonna give you cancer, it's not gonna give you all of these diseases that it's been touted as contributing to, all right? So saturated fat is actually really good for your hormonal problems. It's really good for balancing out your cholesterol. It's really good for your brain. It's really good for your body as a source of energy. So I'm not saying go out and eat all the lard and cheese and you know fat that you possibly can, but if it's in your diet, and if it's part of red meat and it's part of a balanced diet, then don't worry about it, okay? It's not gonna give you heart disease, okay? So now I wanna talk a little bit about the actual markers that can help you predict more accurately whether or not heart disease is a current thing you're being afflicted by or if it's in your future, okay? So the first one is LDL and HDL particle numbers. So the actual particle number, not just the total number. And you can ask your doctor what the particle number is. All right, make sure to get a test that shows the LDL and HDL particle numbers, okay? Another very important test is lipoprotein A. Protein A, that's another one that you wanna make sure you pay attention to. And if you wanna ask your doctor about all of these markers before you get the test, because the last thing you wanna do is get all the tests and then come back and some of these are missing. Okay, you, you obviously don't want that because they're all important for helping you get a range or a good idea on whether or not 
heart disease is um, something that's either in your near future, something you're currently possibly dealing with, or in your further future and what you can do preventably to, to change that. The other two or three tests that you wanna look at are fasting insulin. Okay, so your fasting insulin number, your fasting glucose, those are different even though they're, they seem a lot of times are lumped together, so they are different. Fasting insulin, fasting glucose, and then hemoglobin A1C. Okay, so these are going to determine metabolic health, these bottom three. Uh, metabolic health has a lot to do with um, heart disease. We, we're starting to see more and more research that your metabolic health, so a lot of things like your blood glucose levels, your fasting insulin, your fasting glucose, your he hemoglobin A1C, which is a marker for diabetes, is very important as well, all right? So these are all very important uh, factors to pay attention to. Um, these are the kind of markers that you actually want to look at. As far as we know, as of current date, these are the closest thing we have to predicting or at least giving us a much more clear and accurate picture of the causes of heart disease, okay? So one other tip I wanna give you nutritionally when it comes to cholesterol. So we've talked a lot about how cholesterol really isn't the, uh, the end-all be-all of, of heart disease. We've pretty much nailed it in the bud with this video that Cholesterol is not the only thing we need to look at. We also need to look at metabolic health. We need to look at our gut health. Gut health is actually a lot of new research is being done on gut health. And one of the things it's showing is that the more unhealthy your gut is, the more likely you are to suffer from um, things like cardiovascular disease, dementia, uh, any kind of brain disorders uh, later in life, mental disorders later in life. Even in children, the more um, unhealthy their guts is, the more likely they are to have ADHD, to have um, OCD, lots of other anxiety disorders as well. So your gut health has a lot to do with your overall health. So we'll talk about that. But when it comes to cholesterol, one of the ways you can reduce um, an, an abundance of excess or unnecessary cholesterol is consuming enough fiber. So something you've probably heard me say a million times, fruits and vegetables and you know whole grains if you're going to consume grains, it is a great way of making sure you get enough fiber in your diet and that will help you just kind of naturally, not only stay um, in a healthy cholesterol range, but it will also help you with bowel health, with gut health. I mean, the, the, the good bacteria feeds on fiber-rich foods. So the more fruits and vegetables you get, your gut actually eats that, and the good bacteria is, is grown from eating more and more of these fiber-rich foods. So if you want to improve your gut health, increase your fiber consumption and whole food fiber consumption. All right, don't go to Rite Aid and get Metamucil or, or whatever it is, I forget what the product is, or psyllium husks. I mean, those, are, those have their place here and there. I think they're okay as a supplement, but really we're trying to get as much as we can from food. And if, you know, preventing cardiovascular disease is not important enough to you um, so that you'll actually eat more fruits and vegetables, then I honestly don't know what is important to you or <laughs> what you're trying to, uh, what your, what your quality of life is right now, but I would highly recommend um, paying attention to these things and you know making them a priority in your life. Because again, you do, like the first bullet point here, 90% of all cardiovascular, cardiovascular disease is preventable through modifiable lifestyle and nutrition and health, okay? So you can change your future when it comes to your risk at heart, of heart disease. And I think it's really important to start now especially now that you're a little bit more educated. So sorry for the interruption, guys. I do apologize, but um, thanks for watching today's video. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them in the section down below in the comment section, whether this is on Facebook or YouTube, and uh, I'll go ahead and answer them whenever I have some free time. And if there's enough interest, I'll even do more videos on cholesterol so you guys can get more information to take to your doctor to become more educated and make sure you're getting the most accurate information possible. All right, guys, thanks for watching today's video. I will see you in a future video.